I remember when my granddad talked about picking the first 100 bushel corn, and then when we got into 200 bushel corn, and then we tapped into 300, and you know, we thought that was the limit, and then we've just gone right past that in the last five, six years. We like to plant when conditions are right, because we have planted particular hybrids when it turned off cool, corn came up fine, and we didn't realize it was a problem until we started harvesting it. And we were seeing 60 to 80 bushel difference. And it all came from the temperatures in the soil when it germinated. And that was, that was pretty drastic. You plant it in the ground, and it sits here for a little while, and then usually on the third day is when it takes its real first drink of water. So that third day is extremely critical and you want that drink of water to be a refreshing drink. You don't want it to be a cold chill. Ten years ago, you know, we were starting to see 300s and if if you said we'd have been picking 400 or 500, I'm like, man, no way. But yeah, we have. We've had some really good weather years. So that, that definitely helps. When we started off the this year, you know, things were right. We planted, started on the 13th of April, probably not the best day to think of 13, but you know, we were warm, we were dry enough, and we got it, and the corn came up seven days. Awfully concerned, I might have planted it too shallow, but now we had the good two inch depth. Corn came up fine, then we had a rain event, so it knocked us out for seven days, and then we got back towards the end of April and started back up. Then about the second week of April, we had a cool wet spell. To where here we are about at V3, V4, and we're getting cloudy days, rain, and cool. When I say cool, high in the mid 50s, lows in the upper 30s, low 40s. So we were trying to set the girth of the year at that stage. Uh, but other than that, we've had a great growing season. You know, we've had some cool days, cooler than normal for May. And then we're in this wet spell, and then as we see a hail event. I was up at another farm when we were, this storm came through, but normally the storms come from the south and they came across the river and had some sheet rains, and then all of a sudden had a little bit of hail for probably about 35 seconds or so, or maybe even a minute and a half. Enough to shred some leaves, you know, this isn't quite as bad as we have another field that looks a little bit worse. Fortunately, it seems like you know, it didn't hurt the growing point, and I don't think it looks like it bruised any of the stalks. So with some um, fungicides and some other products, I think we can revive this crop to get some potential. A lot of things happening here with this hail event. What we're trying to do is go back in get this plant jump started, get it back into gear so we can hopefully establish a, a really good yield here in this, in this area. So you're saying like the humic and fulvic acid like the Vidantera? Vidantera. And, and then the micro boom probably be the micronutrient micro package. And, That's correct. And then the carbose, you know, we've had good success with that. So that would be the best carbon source. After we plant corn, yeah, we're putting two to four ounces per acre every, everywhere now. The weather is extremely important, one of our bigger challenges. Yeah, my dad always says Mother Nature's gonna win. We just try to understand it and then understand what we need to do to work with it. That's right. corn crop likes to grow in the daytime and it likes to relax at night so it kind of needs some rest
when the corn gets of a certain size, we don't want to take a chance of damaging it with our sprayer. And it's later in the season, so we focus on trying to keep our plant healthy and green as long as possible. And in doing so, we like to add some fertilizer, some insecticide and fungicides after they're silking. And we use a helicopter as opposed to an airplane. We were just putting on some fertilizer that we call kryptonite. And it's got a real bright green color. And it almost looks like glitter when you apply it on corn. And you can see where that comes in contact with the leaf. Well, the April planted corn matured earlier this year because of the heat. We spent a lot of time making sure I positioned the right hybrid in the right field and the right farm. But then you always second guess yourself, so then we split our planter just to confirm it and spread some risk out. We rarely get hail on our farm. Well, 2017, every irrigated field of corn I had had some degree of hail. Which is like, wow. And then at home, we had a, a strong wind event, so we had some lodging, some green snap, and some brittle snap, and some corn. And the corn that survived that, you know, we were picking decent corn. I mean, I'm saying upper 200s to mid 300s. So year in and year out, that would be good, but knowing the effort and the work that we were putting into it, potential that land has had in the past, we were, I won't say disappointed, but it wasn't the goals, it wasn't the yields that we were hoping for. Another reason why you want to spread your risk out, we had some other irrigated corn planted later in May, and it missed all that heat. So uh, we're anticipating or hoping that corn is going to do better. So we will see. Man, I don't know at all. I just know how to surround myself with good people. I mentioned the agronomists, the seed folks, the fertilizer industry, and, and the biological folks like Philip. And you know, just all just surround yourself with good people. And it makes me look good, it makes my life go a lot easier.